Well, hello, Royals Church Hi. and every circle that is watching today, wherever you find yourself, welcome to your weekly webisode. We are so excited to relaunch webisodes for 2022. They were such an important part of our discipleship yes. and our strengthening of our church and its congregation. So we are excited to be back. We are excited for everything that God's going to do through these times that we sit and we unpack the Word of God. So I want to encourage you to lean in today and may God reach you wherever you are. We were so blessed and we've actually just come off the back of this morning service Amazing with their service. launch. Yeah, it was so phenomenal. The launch of our Vision Sunday and Pastor Adam and Fitzgerald together have revealed the Word that they believe God has given us as a church and as a people um, that as we sit under the hand of God, that this year the theme would be that he would mold us and he would make us. And it really is. And the tagline for this year is a year to bow, to bend and to break. Mm. And so our prayer is for you that you would not just for this week and not just for a few weeks ahead of us, but for the rest of this year, that you would sit in that word mm. and you would allow it to do a powerful, transformative work in your life so that God could continue to bend you as a vessel and to make you who he created you to be, which is so exciting. So I encourage you to lean into that. So Pastor Hope and I are going to unpack this morning's word and we pray that it blesses you wherever you are today. So to begin, we um, so much was said this morning. So much. It was actually <laughs> so much information to take in about the yes. hand of God in our lives and it really excited my spirit and I pray that it excited yours. Mm. But one of my favourite things Pastor Adam said and I mm. mental noted it for this webisode, he, he talked about the vessel that you see. Yeah. What are the, what vessel do you believe God has created you to be? And I think he said things like, "What color is it? What yes. shape is it? Where does it sit? What does it look like?" And I, I thought that would be a good place to start this morning. Yeah, of course. I actually I wrote that in my notes to Elise, and I thought it's really interesting on like a Vision Sunday, and I was like taken back to people at the start of the year especially around this time, January, mm -hmm. February, of the year, they do things like vision boards and, yeah. and plans for the year. And a lot of the time, I feel like, especially for me as a young person, we look to other people's lives and adapt or take something from someone else's life yep. and put it on our vision board mm -hmm. and go, I want that type of car, I want that type of house, or we've seen something on somewhere yeah. and we adopt that. But past Adam today actually said, no, no, Actually, it doesn't look like what you think it looks like. Mm. You need to personally, not copy, you need to personally envision what your life looks like. And I love what he said about the shape, the size, the mm. color. And like even just this beautiful setup we have here this morning, all these vessels we have around us, every single one is unique. Yeah. Every single one was made by a different person, yeah. different shape, different color, all these different, even our mugs this morning, just the craftsmanship, but Pastor Emily really challenged us to say, well, what do you see your life like? Not what have you copied and decided you want from someone else's life, but actually what do you see? What is What yeah. have you placed in front of yourself this year and go, that's what I see? Because vision, we all know that the word vision means to see. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times we just copy and paste what yeah. we've already seen. Mm -hmm. But he said, actually, afresh, what do you see for your life? Where do you see yourself? And especially for us as a church, if we all see ourselves doing the work together, ministry together, building the kingdom together, that is a beautiful picture yeah, that we is. can see and go and run towards this year. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I I think you can't go past Vision Sunday without looking at Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3. No. And it says, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain mm. on tablets that he may who reads it may run with it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will mm. not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Wow. And um, I think that sometimes days like today can just be rushed past or yes. the ideas can just be thrown out and we just kind of move on with our, yeah. our, our year. And, and we are not in the easiest of times. We're in challenging times, but the word of God stands true and it yes. tells us, write the vision down. And I want to encourage you this morning, Pastor Adam said to us to envision yes. what vessel we would become under the hand of God this year. And I want to encourage you to write it down. Mm. And it's not just about 
church and it's not just about ministry. No. It's about every aspect of your life. Exactly. What is the vision for your finances? What is the vision for your relationships? What kind of mother do you mm. want to be? What kind of father do you want to be? What kind of business owner do you like? Whatever it is that God has given you, I want to encourage you today. And I felt challenged in the Me service. Too. Go home, write it down. And, and sometimes it says, um, that it might tarry for a season, but yeah. wait for it. And we don't live in a generation where we are accustomed to or no. comfortable with waiting. We want it now. <laughs> we want instantaneous. Yeah. But but the Bible is clear. There will be a season it might tarry, but it will not tarry forever. And there will come a time. And I love that when I read over dad's notes today and I loved that part, it said, but at the end, mm. And at the end of seasons and at the end of struggles and at the end of trials, the vision will speak. Wow. And it works on both fold. And this is what I was thinking yeah. in the service. Sometimes we're writing down visions of like what we want. Yeah, yeah. And then we see them come to pass and they're positive. But sometimes the vision, it might not be written down, but it's things that you think about and imagine wow. over and over again. And then you get to your life and think... How did I end up here? Yes. It's because you're living out the vision. What do you see? Mm -hmm. That was great. You're actually living out what is in your heart. Yeah. And at the end, it'll speak. Mm. And it's not, doesn't often sound good. No. Because it wasn't, we got to sit in God. We got to yes. sit in his word. We got to sit in his presence. Lord, what is it that wow. you want for this year? And I also want to challenge you as well that, don't allow this season of writing the vision mm. down to be about everything I want and everything yes. I desire. Can I just encourage you today as the body of Christ, our lives were created yes. for the kingdom of God. Exactly. Our lives were created in service. Lord, what do you want from my life this year? What can I offer yeah. back to you. And it might look really, I'm in a very different season. I Myself personally, my season this year does not look like what it looked like maybe four or five years ago. Mm. That's okay. God, what do you have for this season for my life? And mm. get a vision from God I love that. so that he can continue to transform your life. You just reminded me of um, something that Craig Rochelle just said in his uh, a recent book about winning the, the war in your mind, like taking captive of your mind. Very, very good leadership book. He actually says in it, he, one of his quotes is, our lives are actually moving towards our strongest thoughts. Wow, that's great. And he says a lot of people end up somewhere and they're like, how did I get here? Yeah. yeah. But he says, what are you thinking about yeah. constantly? And when you end up there, don't be shocked you're there because yeah. your actual, your, wherever your mind is, your you're, you are actually moving towards that every Absolutely. time you think about that. Yep, that's exactly and what right. was beautiful is what you said about it's this process. Um, pottery, mm. and Pastor Adam went into this today, the process of pottery. Yeah. Yes, my generation, instead of us actually going and getting a pottery class, we'll just go on Etsy or that's eBay right. or somewhere yeah. and go, oh, that's a beautiful pot, I'll go buy that. But there's actually an art and a more of appreciation like my sister and our sisters, both of them actually, do pottery yeah. and they've done pottery. And the process, the things that Joy have, has made and Renee's made and we physically have seen, I appreciate it more than yeah. something I've bought because I know they've put effort in yeah. it. There was a process. They've learnt. They've put art and they've like put this time into it. And I think that's really reflective of our lives. Hey? It is, absolutely. There's actually a process that has to happen. And Pastor Adam really broke that down today in the process of making pottery, there is a bending, a breaking, a rolling, a drying, a shelving. Now yeah. that was challenging. Yeah. He said a lot of the times we think we're that, oh, why, why isn't the process happening faster? But there's actually a process in pottery making where you've got to place that pottery on the shelf and just let, let it, it air dry. dry. That's right. Absolutely. And so that process that we have to go through, um, like you said, it doesn't just happen like that. There's actually steps. steps There's yeah. time that it takes in between them and it's mm. really detailed too. It is, yeah. I, mm. I know for us on Friday we set up this design yeah. and we got out the plaster and we redid a lot <laughs> of um, really fun therapeutic things. Yeah, so much um, but we were on a time frame and we were like, we've got to set up. It's mm. Friday afternoon. We've got to get everything in place ready for Sunday. And I actually had done this vase here next to me and um, it wasn't dry yet. <laughs> it really wasn't, but I had Dalma was yeah. here and I, Dalma was helping us bring stuff to the front. And um, 
And that's the temptation is like uh, there's been wow. work put in. That's good. There's been work yeah. put in. And it did. It took us a lot of time and we, you know, every pillow we pa uh, painted and lathered mm. and, and texturized and did all those things. Um, but I wanted to get it set up quickly. Wow. And the problem with that is then there's now fingerprints <laughs> <laughs> in the vase. Um, and that is the temptation is like wow. all of us feel no one is sitting there thinking oh, there's not been a, a trialing no. season or a, a, a work in us. And the temptation is to think we're ready maybe earlier than we are. Don't, don't wow. rush the drying Very process. Good. And it might feel like wasted. It might feel um, nothing's happening. But the truth is in that drying process, you're actually being strengthened. Wow. Now today, if I touch this vase, it's dry. It's ready for use. Yes. Friday, it was not ready for <laughs> use. Um, and so, and then mm. what happens is damage. Yep. Damage happens when we are positioned wow. for something we actually aren't ready for. And Very so good. the vision this year that God mm. has for you, write it down, find it, make it plain and clear. But as a corporate body, the word for us this year is mold me and make me. Yeah. And the truth is that word sounds really lovely. Yes, it's, it's but beautiful. But the reality of yeah. that word is saying that, and just like the word of God talks about, get on the wheel yeah. of the potter. Surrender. So that he can mold and make me, which if you've watched pottery, yes. it is a, it's almost tedious. It's like it continually breaking it down, reshaping it. No, that didn't yeah. work. And, and. If you are the clay, yep. I don't think it would be that great of an experience. No, getting squashed all yeah, out, like pushed around, pushed yeah. down and broken down. And and I really believe in this in this year through this word that's come through our pastors and to our church. This is actually the year to get on the wheel, and it's yes. not just to sound good. It's not just good language, which I love all that stuff. Yeah, but it's actually the year to get on the wheel and let God. Do the work in you that needs to be done. I, exactly. I was sitting in church this morning and I was thinking, Lord, what are the things in my life yeah. that have hardened that actually need to be broken? Yes, and, and there's things that aren't yet formed in us. That's the molding. Yes. Uh, but there is a breaking as well that maybe this year there's things that you've built in your life and you've set up mm. that God actually is displeased with. Yeah. And there, there might be things that you do habitually. There might be things you do yes. subconsciously that God is saying, I don't want, that's not the vision wow. I have for your life. I have something far better. And that could be a painful process. Oh, it is. But, but at the end, the Beautiful. vision will speak. At the mm. end, the vision will speak. And, and I know that this year, it actually is a year to surrender yeah. the vessel. And, and if we could see ourselves as the vessel, Yes. on the wheel. Imagine what God could do if we said, not my will. And Jesus gave us that yeah. perfect example. He said, not my will, but, but your will be done. Yes. Sounds good, but to do it is a completely different yeah. experience. And I, I would pray that as a church, we wouldn't be people who just say things no, and don't. it wouldn't just be noise, but it would actually be like, truly is God working yeah. on the inside of our hearts. And so really encourage you with that today. Yeah. A couple of things I just wanted to highlight and as you break this up in your circle, Pastor Adam spoke from Genesis 1, 1, 2 to, and 2 to 8 and it's the history of creation mm. and he spoke about the different elements which were light, air or atmosphere, water, vege vegetation um, the, and then all the process of creation, the sea creatures in the water, the yeah. birds in the air, the cattle, the beasts, the reptiles and finally the creation of man and he spoke about um, how Adam was created from the dust and yes. mum actually lent over to me in the service. She said, I'm so glad we weren't made from the dirt. We were made <laughs> from the <laughs> rib. Um, but mankind came yeah. from the dirt and our, our bodies were literally yeah. formed under the hand of God and he wow. spoke our existence into being. Wow. And I want to encourage you this morning that mm. when he formed Adam, there was such a unison of God and man. It was this beautiful coming together yes. and this forming of God's intention for humanity, which was pure relationship with him, it always was, fellowship right? with yeah. him. Um, and then all this process unfolded where um, the fall of man came mm. and all that, all those steps that led to the separation of, of us and God. But I will never forget this morning as I thought about that Jesus, uh, God, in his essence, created man from nothing, nothing. and from the mm. dust of the earth. And today I, 
as I was sitting in the service, I thought there's probably people who feel like dirt. Yes. There's probably people who feel like they are nothing. Mm. They are of no value. They have nothing to contribute. Um, but I want to tell you that our, our humankind, yes. the entire human race came from dirt, came from <laughs> nothing. And you serve a God who can take nothing yes. and make it something. And today you might say my vessel is, you, you know, if I looked around our setup here today, there's vessels that are exquisite and there's vessels that are quite simple. And you yes. might today say, I, I want to be exquisite, but I'm not, no. I'm simple. I want you to know that if you get back on the wheel, yes. the possibilities of what God can do in your life Amazing. are actually endless. And so do not give up, write yes. the vision down. That was, that was very powerful. And that brought to what Pastor Adam said about um, vessels too. He's went to talk about vessels of gold and silver. Yeah. And it's probably a very good thing to point out, at least like you said, about some of us don't feel we are that pretty vessel at this yeah. point. And he said that there's this um, misunderstanding in church that the people who get on the stage, the people who get on platform, they're already vessels of gold and silver. But actually, that's not the case. Mm. We all this year, especially in this, with this new vision being put out of, hey, are you going to re-surrender your life to God and let him mold and make you? That actually the platform doesn't make you an exquisite vessel straight away. We're actually all going through this process. Yeah. We all need to say, okay, maybe I have molded my life into something that wasn't actually intended. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's what it says in Timothy. Yeah. That's the scripture he read, 2 Timothy uh, 2, 20 to 22. But in a great house, there are, on, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some of honor, wow. some of dishonor. Exactly. And that means that for, and let's be real, there will be seasons that you've been a vessel of honor yeah. and there'll be seasons you've been a vessel of dishonor. There is none perfect among no. us. That, that's the reality. But would our heart lean this year yes, towards exactly. being a vessel of honor? And that is, has no weight no. on our positions. It has no weight on your um, relational status, financial status. It has no Not weight. The weight that it alone it rests in is who am I to God and who is yeah. God to me? That's really where the weight rests. And I want to encourage you today, if you've been in a season where you've dishonored the word of God and you've mm. dishonored people, workplaces, churches, pastors, you might be that person who has completely dishonored yes. and and maybe there's a part of your spirit that's grieving today. I might, I, maybe I sent something prophetically this yeah. morning, but I want to encourage you. You can, under the hand of God, yes. break down what was to become what God intended you to be, which is a vessel of honor. Exactly. And so what was doesn't have to be what is. God no. can still work. He's still moving. He's still reaching people. He's still transforming lives. So don't give up on that process, but lean and give your heart to become a vessel of honor. I just want to back onto that too, Elise, that encouragement of we maybe have felt that way. And then in what would, where it's beautiful this year how college theme mm -hmm. of vessels just ties in with the church theme too, because the college theme is 2 Timothy 2.21, which it says, um, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified. And then in brackets, it says set apart yeah. for a special purpose. Beautiful. But then it goes on to say useful to the master, prepared for every good, good work. work. Yeah. I love just, I love that good work at the end, but there's a part that really gets me every time I read it. Oh, useful to the master. Yeah. I think a lot of our, us want our lives to amount to something. Absolutely. We want to be useful to God. We want to be useful in the house. We want to be useful in our families, in our occupations, in some form of way. But actually it's saying here, you're not going to be useful for the things you probably thought you were going to be useful for. Mm. The actual, the method or the step here or the actual most important part is that you're going to be useful to the master. Yeah, that's right. And when we do surrender our lives to the master, to God and say, God, use me, mm. he can do much greater things Absolutely. with these humble vessels than we could even imagine or think. That's right. Yeah. It's really, it, that's the actual process there is that we're not just shaping our lives. We're not just having a clay party and, you know, having a thing. Yeah. It's actually going, Master, you know me better than I know myself. Absolutely. You know what this life is supposed to look like. You know the plan and purpose for me. So Absolutely. I'll let 
I will yeah. surrender to you. What you intended, exactly. absolutely. I um I loved, and we're probably going to wrap up on this point. Um, but there is a process to pottery. Exactly. There's a process <laughs> to the creation, um, and the creations that sit around us. In everything that's created, exactly. I'm a I think I love process but the truth <laughs> is I often don't and even like sometimes you can enjoy it to begin with and then you're like oh okay this is tedious let's the mess, let's move the on <laughs> but there is this beautiful process under the hand of God there is. and and it all begins and I love this number one that Pastor Adam wrote he said what's the vision of the vessel that's actually the very starting exactly. point and he has written down 17 yep. processes to the process of the vessel. And I won't give them all to you today, but I want to say to begin this year and uh, and maybe you've already begun, maybe you've already written down your vision for the year, but maybe God has something else he yes. wants to speak. Maybe you could open the door to that. Write down what is the vision so that you can start to move towards everything God intended for you. And I want to prophesy today and I want to mm. declare over you, no matter where you are, I want to encourage your spirit today. You might feel bogged down and you might feel like I have been this person for so long. I can't be something else. Well, today I just declare over your life that God has greater in store. He has goodness in store. He is the God who breaks the generational cycles. Amen. He's the God who restores, heals, delivers and sets free. And who you are today is not who you have to be. When you look back, at the end of this year, our prayer is that the vision you write down today would speak and you would look back over your shoulder over this year and you would see the trail of the goodness yes. of God. So may this be a year to bow, to bend, to break and may He mould us and make us in Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you and see you really soon. See you soon. Thanks for joining us here on the Royals YouTube channel. If this has blessed you, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you for another glorious gathering.